Well, you're very welcome to Beyond the Cottage here in the west of Ireland. And this is going to be a little bit of a compilation video because I'm trying to put all the clips together of, you know, the past few days. So the, there's going to be a little bit of cooking. Um, I'm going to show you the tree that fell down. I'm going to let you come with me down onto the front of the driveway to see the work I'm doing there. I'm putting in a new bed, actually. And um, a few other things as well. So you're very welcome. Well, I'm just about to make some dinner for myself. And um, Patsy's there, just relaxing. So I'll show you what I'm cooking. Um, in the top steamer, I've got cauliflower. In the middle one, I have broccoli. And in the lower one, I've got some potatoes. I'm never going to be having that, but there's a really good sprinkling of some vegan mozzarella cheese. The steamer is fantastic because it saves so much energy. You can see there's the cauliflower. And um, it's quite ingenious. Because it's so simple. Let me see if I can lift this up. Oh, look, there's my broccoli. And it's all being cooked for the cost of just cooking one item. So there's been a lot of things happening over the past few days. Um, just before the weekend, I made the decision to get a new stove for the kitchen because this stove is on its last legs, so to speak. Um, the boiler needs replacing. The chimney doesn't look too great. The sides beginning to come off. I mean, this was an old stove when I bought it. It was third or fourth hand. Can't get this door open anymore. It's um, sort of locked in. Yeah. So here we are down in the shores of Loch Mila. Those of you who are familiar with this loch, it's just by Keiju, my local village, will know that this is about halfway between my cottage and the post office in Ballyfarnan. So I've just got to say, there's been a lot of delays over the past week in the post office. Quite a few things have gone wrong on the system. So if you have ordered a book and it's not showing up yet, please be patient. It's on its way. I love stopping here because it's just so calming and I love to hear the sound of water, you know the lapping of the water on the shore. It's quite hypnotic and uh, relaxing and you know, I think this is something that we all need. We all need to take little snaps of time out of our day just to connect with nature and just feel good, just to feel calm and at one with everything. That's so important. You know, we're, we're constantly told to look after ourselves, but our mental health and well-being is of the utmost importance because it seems to control all other aspects of who we are. From just feeling good, feeling calm, sleeping well at night. The beautiful signs. Yes, indeed, nature is so healing. I'm just taking a few steps into the forest beside the lake and I notice that there's a new bench 
and seats. In fact, I think there's two of them. There's another one just along here. I feel very privileged to live in such a beautiful environment. And I'm glad that there's a huge part of my soul that appreciates this too. The past week has been very busy for me, but it's been wonderful to be able to see the return of the light. And you can see it here. Not just the back windows that's face south, but even this north window. There's just so much beautiful light and it's sort of a, a silvery light at this time of year. It's not quite that hot golden light of summer. It is that beautiful silvery light. And the cottage is so warmed <laughs> when the sun just streams in like this. And of course Patsy, darling, really yeah. loves it. Lovely wee girl. She jumps up onto the windowsill yeah, sometimes to have a little yeah. peep out. Let's just look at this light. Isn't it wonderful? And it's amazing that this beautiful dark raspberry red doesn't dull the walls at all. It seems to make everything much more vibrant. So I've been getting stuck into work as well this week and this piece of land just down by the driveway, the end of the driveway, became very congested with the rubus and the various shrubs and even the buddleia. So I've really made an effort to dig into it, to start to clear it and I'm going to put a new bed, a perennial bed in here with maybe some... Um, um, annuals as well and also where I was pointing my finger there that's to do with the hedge I'm going to be taking some of that down so it doesn't overshadow everything it's been a huge task and I've employed all kinds of tools to do it but it's getting there and I had planned to go to the garden centre and get some plants so I think perhaps at the end of this video, I will take you to the garden centre. Today is Sunday and I'm just getting things sort of sorted, not quite. <laughs> getting there, getting there. Yeah. This is a wonderful time of the year, isn't it? To have a good old tidy up and clear out and I have the trailer belonging to my son parked at the top of the drive and I'm filling that with tyres that I no longer use and oh yes and here is the tree that fell over. Uh, it's a pole pine so it's fairly fast growing. These pines are very shallow roots so they don't have a lot to be able to cling on to the earth. So you know it'll It'll make some pretty decent logs for the stove and uh, might even make a little pool here where the stream comes down from the spring well. I might just create a little pool in this area so dam a little bit of it. And um, yeah, plant another tree or two or three. I've got some nice birch and a few other trees growing in pots. So the way that I do it is that I plant them when they're small and that way then the wind doesn't disturb them too much. And they get the chance then to kind of bed themselves in, get a grip on things. A bit like myself trying to get a grip on the work. <laughs> Someone I once knew many years ago used to say, get a grip, Colette. <laughs> well, yeah, sometimes. <laughs>
sometimes sometimes it's not that easy. So here's myself and Patsy collecting some kindling for the fire, for the stoves. There's so much now. The woodland gives me so much. I know it was hard work in the beginning and it was just a case of head down into the wind and the rain and keep planting. But now there's so much wood and kindling and love and nurturing and it's all coming back to me. And I do feel really blessed. So here we are finally at Ardcarn Garden Centre. It's my local garden centre. It's um, between Carrick, the town of Carrick and the town of Boyle. And uh, it's about six kilometres away, something like that. Very warm, very friendly. The, the staff, I've known some of the staff in here now for almost 20 years since I began the Bealtaine project. And uh, I know most of them think I'm very eccentric, which I probably am. But I love this garden centre. I, I love to chat with people. I love to look at all this, all the beautiful things like the pots. I'm really into pots at the moment because they're like a movable feast. You know, you can plant something beautiful in a pot. And uh, as long as you've got a trolley, which I have, you can move it around you've got these little feet here for the pots you know to raise them up from the ground so many beautiful beautiful pieces of ceramic and uh look this is new this is a kind of a new look um yeah these are beautiful pots i'm very easily swayed into purchasing a pot <laughs> bird tables as well i love them and these are quite sturdy because I have two in the garden and uh, they're doing really well. Like they, they are very sturdy, they are very durable. Lots of um, little baskets and um, little pots of plants, especially the annuals. And um, I noticed here, these beautiful primulas, you get two two carriers of them for 10 euro so i'm very i'm very swayed by those as well these are all the perennials perennials of course are brilliant because they don't look much in the pot but you put them into the ground and give them some food and they will just begin to look fabulous and then you can divide them up you okay. see and uh, spread them about Big into evergreens as well. Oh, there's my goddess. There's three. Am I seeing three? <coughs> so Ardcarn has begun to increase the statuary, which, again, I'm just so into because I, I, love, I love to create gardens and woodlands with beautiful little things just hither and thither when you least expect them. Yeah, look at this, 
little bit of a little bit of a rascal there, a little bit of a devil. And these bird baths are lovely. There's nothing like watching a bird in a bird bath and on a hot summer's day. These are huge Buddhas. Like I say, they've really stepped up into the statuary for gardens. And these lovely sort of um, big urns. Now we're looking at the bare-rooted trees here. I'm going to come down maybe tomorrow or the next day and get some of these and put them in the ground. These are very good value. They're all about one ninety nine or two ninety nine. And they're burr rooted and they're they're big enough to be noticed but small enough to be fairly protected from the wind. So these are beautiful oak trees. Look at this. And these are all I think they're about three or four euro each. All kinds of different trees. There's um thorn thorn trees and shrubs and Green beech and um, hedging and just about everything. So it's not expensive to plant out a garden if you're going to use bare rooted stock. You know, you could probably plant it out for a hundred euro, maybe less, and you can get some pretty great looks for that. These little polytunnels. They keep on advancing the style of the polytunnel. You know, making them more durable as well. Roses, I'm not too keen on roses other than climbing roses. I love those. These are huge trees here. You're going to pay at least 450, 500 euro for one of these huge trees. Personally, I've never bought one. I never will. Um, I like to plant my babies and watch them grow. Great selection of just about everything here, including fencing and trellis and half barrels. Now, these are really nice. And again, evergreens, and you can grow them in pots. You see in my garden around the back of the cottage, I've got quite a few plants in pots. And I'm actually moving some of them down to the entrance as well. Now, a good part of the of the garden centre is covered in, so it's kind of half in, half out. I'll show you that in a few moments. I love when this happens. Look at the little cyclamen, which has obviously escaped from a pot and made itself comfortable there. So we're just going into the covered section. It's open on all sides. It's just covered on the top from the worst of the elements. And of course here you've got some beautiful, um, oh yes, rhubarb, look at this. That's a bargain, 6 99 for a good crown of rhubarb and not spread year on year. Again, um, some beautiful woodwork for the garden. Beautiful covered benches and mirrors and just a lot of great stuff. I mean, you know, you could spend a fortune down here or equally you can come down here and spend five or six euro, have a cup of coffee in the cafe, which is just on the other side of this uh, woodwork and um, meet a friend. You know, it's, it's just a beautiful place to come for a day out. Well, not a whole day, but, you know, maybe a, a few hours, should we say. I do love garden centres. I'm very entranced by them, you know. So you can see... Yeah, look at that. You can actually have it put together for €15. Euro. That's... Uh, that's good value. I like that because I can't, I can't bear putting things together. I get very agitated. Of course, there's all the bird food. Now, you see those big white sacks? I'll show you those in a moment. I've got to get one of those this week. I keep, I keep these nuts for the birds in, in, a, big, in a big dustbin in the, uh, in the barn. And it's better value if you buy a big sack. But they are heavy, so I might have to get someone to bring it up to me. Wind chimes. 
Anyone who knows me knows I love wind chimes. They're very underrated, you know. Very relaxing to listen to those sounds. So this is the shop indoors, and um, there's lots of beautiful objets d'art and uh, you know mirrors and flowers, artificial flowers, of course. They're inside, but but there are some plants in here as well, and uh, lots of lots of garden paraphernalia. Anything from wreaths that you can decorate yourself, uh, all the kind of garden bits and bobs that you need. And, of course, not forgetting, most importantly, the seeds. So a lot of the Irish seeds here, which is great because they're obviously acclimatised. And, you know, sowing seeds and growing them on. It's a very magical thing to, to do, to watch and to and to enjoy the the little journey of the seed into a beautiful plant. And seed potatoes. Very important here in Ireland. We all love our spuds. And there's some more seeds. These are vegetable seeds. A very good selection, I've got to say, and a good selection of organic seeds as well. Now, this is one of my favourite products. It's a little treat, and I got some little treats for my daughter-in-law for her birthday. This is an Irish company. It's a handmade soap company. And the people who run this company, actually, when they started it in the very early days, they visited me and brought me a basket of their products because they both followed my uh, website and my YouTube channel. And they are beautiful people, got to say. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed that and blessings to you all.